Good morning everyone from Jeff's Little Engine Service. So what we have here is another almost new generator that will not start. Uh, the customer says it, it will start but it's very difficult to start and it runs horrible so I know what's going on. When I see a brand new generator like this that will not start um, I know the problem most likely is inside the fuel system and the carburetor. Anytime these things sit for any period more often than not, after storage, these things need a little bit of carburetor work. And it's built by Generac. I'm not sure what type of engine this thing has. It's... I think Generac makes their own engines. It's OHV. Looks easy enough to work on, easy to get to the carburetor. So you can see I already drained the gas. I just pulled this hose off the carburetor and let it drain into there. Took a peek inside the gas tank and as you can see, no rust. Everything is still in really good shape there. So I wanna make sure that that's all dried out and cleaned out before I put fuel back in. Let me turn this thing around. I think I like that angle a little bit better for you all. This type of carburetor is pretty easy to work on. That black plug there going down into the carburetor is where your slow speed pilot jet is located. And the main jet you have to take off the float bowl to get to. So let's do that. And so the reason why I mentioned the slow jet and the main jet is because that's the area of the carburetor that usually gets plugged up. So let's check it out. I have my 10 millimeter socket here. Let's take the float bowl off. You will get some gas coming out. I've already disconnected the fuel line here, so it's just the gas that's left in the carburetor that'll drain out. Uh-oh, yeah, see? That's what your uh, float bowl bolt looks like, and you can see on this one, see all that corrosion? That's not a good sign. So, sometimes you have to give these float bowls a little tap to get them loose. There we go. There's a gasket up in there, so make sure not to lose it. If you take it out carefully enough, you can reuse it usually. Yeah, see, there it is. I think we can reuse that. And you can see what the problem is inside the carburetor. All that corrosion and sediment in there has plugged everything up. Since it's that bad on the inside, uh, I do need to remove this whole carburetor to clean it. Sometimes you can get away with just cleaning out the float bowl, putting it back on. But in this case, we will have to remove the carburetor. Take off the air filter cover. This is the air filter foam. And that's what it looks like inside. You have that nut there and one on the other side here. And then this one on the other side that you have to take off. It's 10 millimeter nuts. Looks like I'll be able to take this off, but we do have a breather hose that's attached. They usually just pull off. Yep. Oops.
there we go. Now we'll see about getting this carburetor off of here. So the carburetor moves out now. Uh, to take it off completely, you do have to disconnect. We've already disconnected the fuel line, remember, but we do have to disconnect the linkage and the spring. I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty easy. Okay, so here we go over here. It doesn't really matter which one you take off first. So I'll take the spring off. Oh, did you see that? We lost our uh, choke lever. Just, just make sure not to lose it. It goes, you can see this pin goes into there. And it just kind of sets in place, so I guess we can take that off for now. So we've already removed the spring. We're going to pull this out as far as we can, and you can see there's a gap in the top of this plastic dealy bobber. And it just pulls right out. And to reinstall it, you just push it in, and you're good. But that's how you take it out. Now, hopefully, we can take this whole carburetor off. There we go. You can see we have quite a bit of uh, corrosion on the inside as well. So we need to make sure to clean this off. We're going to go ahead and take the float off. Don't lose anything. And if you lift the float off like this, the float needle will stay in place. There's a little spring that holds it in place. If you can see, I'm just going to leave it on there. That's one of the most important parts inside your carburetor. Everything's important, but that little valve right there does wear out after time. I think we'll be okay on this one since it's, uh, well, we'll see. It's always a good idea to replace it, but I'm going to reuse this one for now. So now you can see the carburetor is pretty clean down in there. It's just this uh, end part we're going to have to deal with, and we're also going to have to take out the main jet down in there and we will be taking out the pilot jet as well. You can call that a slow speed jet as well as a pilot jet. And I'm looking at some of the other passages and they look pretty good. So luckily most of the uh, stuff is just in the bottom of the carburetor. But it's always important to take out the main jet. And the emulsion tube behind it or the nozzle if you want to call it that. So you'll want to be very careful removing that. Uh, you can see it's a, it's a specially made screwdriver for it, but you can easily use a regular screwdriver if it fits. I've sprayed a little bit of carburetor cleaner down in there to try to loosen things up. Oh, that's good. Got it. And these rarely thread all the way out. You usually have to fight with them, tap them out. There it goes. Don't lose that. That's what it looks like. And that's what the main jet looks like. And that's the hole that gets plugged up. It has to go all the way through. I don't know if you can see it, but this one is plugged. So now down in here we have the nozzle, or the emulsion tube. And sometimes it'll fall right out. Ooh, I got lucky. Other times... Can you see it up in there? It pokes through. Other times you have to stick a screwdriver in here and push down on it, but luckily this one's just falling right out. All of these tiny little holes need to be cleared out, as well as the passage all the way through it. Okay, now let's take out the slow jet. So it looks like the idle adjustment screw is uh, tamper proof, but I'm going to tamper with it. Whoa, see that? Now we can tamper with it. So remember how far it's poking through there on the other side, because that's where you need to put it back when you put it back in. Now, on some carburetors, there's a screw that you have to take off to get to the slow jet. 
On this particular model carburetor, you just have to pop this thing up. It's a little plastic flow jet. Be careful, you can break it. So what I do is I just pry it up a little bit on each side. Oh, and then it comes out. There's also very small O-rings uh, on this plastic piece that you'll want to inspect and make sure aren't damaged. Looks like we're good on this one. But there's an ever so tiny hole down in this little brass portion that needs to be poked out. You can see how small it is. Something the size of a speck of sand can plug it up and then your carburetor won't, won't run right. So let's go ahead and poke that out. And you'll want to make sure the passageways down in there are clear. They usually are. So I just want to stick some very small wire down in there. Make sure it pokes through. It does. So we know that jet is cleared out. And I'll do the same with the main jet. So this one's definitely plugged. And you also want to clean off every aspect of the jet too because you don't want to, you can see how small you can see how small that hole is that's what gets plugged up then you have all this stuff on the uh, float it's like a little layer of stuff that needs to be cleaned off I'm gonna put all this stuff in to soak first I'm gonna clean this out a little bit Alright, so I have some carburetor cleaner in here. I'm just going to uh, start soaking this stuff. And all the jets. Alright, let this soak. We'll let this soak for a while and hopefully all that crud will come off. Yeah, I have that looking pretty good. I'm also going to make sure that all these uh, little areas are cleaned out. That's important too. I can see some stuff down in there I'll want to get. So things are looking pretty clean on this carburetor. One very important tip I need to give you is that you need to clean out uh, these tiny little holes on the inside. I don't know if you can see them in there. But basically, I just do that to my wire. And reach down in there. Can you see that, hopefully? And you poke through each one. Looks like there's four of them on this carburetor. And if you have an air compressor, a good idea too. Nice and clean. Cleaned everything off really good. All the holes are cleared out. I'm going to start putting this thing back together. I'm going to go ahead and put the slow jet in here. I'll spray a little bit of WD-40 in there so it goes in easier. And you can see it goes in uh, with the flat side this way. So it goes down in like this. It 
Once again, you'll want to make sure that hole is poked out and yeah, it goes in flat side like that and you push it into place. There we go. We'll put the nozzle in, the main jet, it's clear. Not too tight, you can break this stuff pretty easily. It's made out of brass. That should be tight enough. Put the float and the float valve back into place. And the pin that holds it in. But you knew that. Don't forget your O-ring here. Make sure it's in the groove. There we go. Oops, I almost forgot to put in the idle screw. So all the parts are finally all cleaned up. One thing I do want to mention is you don't want to put that um, plastic slow jet into the carburetor cleaner because it will ruin the, uh, the tiny little O-rings that are on it. So don't do that. So we're nice and clean. I already have the main jet and nozzle back in there. I just need to put on the float. You can see this is how clean our float bowl turned out which is pretty good. All right, let's put it back together. And I usually put a Q-tip down into the float valve uh, hole here, this little brass hole. Make sure it's good and cleaned out before I put the float back in. I'm trying to do this with one hand here. My left hand, which is not my trying to do this with one hand here there we go all right gotta make sure to clean off that bolt too it can get dirty Tighten this up, not too tight. You can strip it. Ah, that should be good. All right, so back in action over here. Okay, oh boy. So I still see a little bit of gas on the end of this fuel line, so I'm not gonna hook that up yet. I wanna make sure the fuel tank is good and dried out before I hook that back up. Um, which, as you can see, we've got, you have the spring here. Let's see if I can get that out of the way for you. Just want to make sure the spring is still attached on, on that end. And I think you can see on the carburetor, that little hole there is where the spring goes. So, let's see if I can put the carburetor on first. Yeah, I think I can do this and I'll, I'll hook up the uh, I'll hook up the linkage first. goes in that hole there and then you just push it down into place like so and uh, now should be able to hook up the spring all right so let, let's hook up the linkage spring there we go looks like I bent it a little bit but that should be okay Alright, so the 
carburetors in place. Like I said, I'm going to make sure this is completely dried out before I attach it. Turn it off for now. There we go. Now what do we have? It's this piece. Don't forget to hook up your breather hose. Basically just uh, pokes onto that. Almost forgot our funky little choke bracket here goes on like so there we go now we have choke okay and then this little guy how does he go on like that Go ahead and put on the uh, tube there. Ten millimeter socket here. Tighten them up evenly on both sides before I start cranking them down. Now you want these to be pretty tight, but not too tight that you break something. Because you have some gaskets to smash here. Ah. There we go. Choke still works. Put our air filter back in here. Alright, it's time to take this baby out into the cold and test it out. I just want to make sure the gas tank and the fuel line are dried out before I uh, fuel it up. Okay, the gas tank is good and cleaned out and nice and dry, that's what you want. Turn the fuel valve on, give it a minute or two to fill up the carburetor. Let's see, that would be choke closed there. And give it a second to fill up. Okay, let's see what happens.